Over the past two and a half years of owning my Saron, I've ridden over 2,000 miles on stock power and 3.7 thousand miles on 72 volts. It's safe to say that I have put this bike through every situation possible, riding in rain, snow, and blistering heat. I've crashed or broke it in nearly every possible way, and I have spent over $10,000 just on mods. And that was only in the first year. Yes, I have a problem. If you're doing it, stop it. Get some help. And boy oh boy, if only I had this video back then, it would have saved me a lot of money. So that is why in this video, I'll be covering with you the best mods that you should get for your Saron from the essentials that you need to put on it when it first arrives to your door to what you should be looking into after you've been riding for thousands of miles. So without taking up any more time, let's just get right into this video. But first, what would you do if you were going to the store and you got hit by a distracted driver? Well then, you could call Pound Law, that is Pound 529, and get in contact with Morgan & Morgan, America's largest injury law firm. Did you know that you don't need a lot of money to hire a lawyer? Because with Morgan & Morgan, their fee is free. You only pay if you win, and there is no upfront cost or sign-up fees to you. So if you are ever injured in an accident, you can learn about Morgan & Morgan by clicking the link in the description or dial pound law that is pound 529 from your cell phone. Thank you Morgan & Morgan for sponsoring this video. Now before I get into all the mods, let me just say this. The stock Saron is a good bike and I don't feel like you need to upgrade everything right away. Ride the bike the way it is and modify things that are most important to you first. Don't feel the need to go and buy every single mod in this video. And with that said, all the links for everything that I mentioned are gonna be in the description down below. So with that, let's begin with the first day mods, the stuff that you should get pretty much right away. Starting with pegs and a peg spacer. Hands down, by far the worst thing on the stock Saron is the pegs. They are tiny and provide practically zero grip because the teeth in them are smooth. Sure, you could sharpen them, I guess, but still, they're just way too small for my feet personally, and whenever I ride the Saron with stock pegs, I'm worried that my feet are gonna slip off. So the first thing right away when you order your bike, get some new pegs. I installed my Warp 9 pegs the week that I got my bike, and they have held up extremely well and are still very grippy to this day. Another essential to go with is this peg spacer because when you drop your Saron, all the weight falls onto the peg. And while it is nice that because of this your frame gets saved from scratches, the catch is that the metal mount the pegs are connected to can bend or snap. It doesn't even need to be from dropping the bike. They could bend from you bottoming out super hard, so this little brace will prevent that for the most part. I actually broke this mount one time because my bike was sliding and the peg got caught in something, causing the force to go out on the peg instead of in, which caused it to snap. So if you're worried about that or just want to have a more pimped out Saron, get some spacers that have bolts that screw into each side and you won't have to worry about that ever again. Raised bars. On the stock Saron, the bars are mounted at a mountain bike position with a not very similar to a mountain bike geometry Saron that they are on. This makes riding it, especially when you're off-road and standing up, uncomfortable, especially for tall people like me. Having the handlebars higher raises your body to a more traditional dirt bike riding position. And on top of that, a direct stem mount with a riser can help even more with this, which is what I'm running right now, and I absolutely love it. While I'm still on the subject of tall guy mods, let me mention the seat and peg extenders real quick. Basically, I don't like them. I've broken both of them in crashes, the peg extender will make you scrape your pegs with smaller wheels when you're corner hard, and the seat extender makes the battery tray pinch your balls. So an overall 3 out of 10 for both of these extender mods combined. Shimano brake pads. The stock Saron brakes are not amazing by any means, but they get the job done. And by far the cheapest mod that you can do to improve them is just get Shimano brake pads. This is fairly common knowledge and I don't really need to explain it to you because that's really all it is to it. Just get Shimano brake pads for the stock brakes. Easy as that. Aftermarket grips. The stock Saron grips just suck. I do not know how some of you are still riding with them for any more than a week. I remember on the very first day I got my Saron, my non-throttle hand grip would twist when I was riding and it was super annoying and it would just mess me up. After that, I got Domino grips and I have not looked back. I'm not saying you need to get the exact same brand, but just get some aftermarket grips. Spending some extra money on the things that you're holding onto is probably the most important part of Saron mods. Race Spec Saron Bash Guard. The stock bash guard might as well be cut out of a soda can with how much protection it actually provides. I can guarantee you that it will bend the first time you actually have to use it. But the reason this mod is a little bit further back is because most people just aren't going to need this, unless you ride off-road a lot. 
And even then, you could probably get away with riding on the stock one, but do you really want to take the risk of cracking a motor magnet just because you skipped out on a $60 upgrade? I definitely don't. And I especially like the race spec Suron Bash Guard over all the other ones because it's made of plastic, which helps you slide over rocks easier and also has a bit of give so it's not just straight metal to metal impact. And despite me buying this Bash Guard a month after my bike, it is still not cracked or failed me to this day. And trust me, I have put it through a lot of abuse. rear triangle and linkage. This one again is more specific to certain type of riders, but if you're planning on doing any decent sized jumps, just hold off on it until you get a rear triangle and a rear linkage upgrade because those two pieces are the weakest part of the suspension. And if they break, you are pretty much guaranteed to have a broken rear shock as well. A bike alarm and GPS tracker. Once again, the same thing, depending on where you live, you might want a bike alarm or at least a GPS tracker. The Surons are really light, so anyone that has a medium-sized car and some motivation can easily pick up a Suron and just toss it in the back of their car and drive away. And out of all of the mods, this is perhaps the only one that can actually save your bike from theft. So the way I think about it, it's better to have it and not need it than need it and not have it. And in addition, for all of you off-road mud freaks out there that just love riding in terrible conditions that are super muddy and slippery and just gross, the first thing that you should put on your Suron is this, mud guards a mud flap, and new tires. The stock fenders or mud guards or whatever you want to call them are honestly just a joke. They don't stop anything. And for the front, I actually just have a YZ85 fender that's chopped up and held on with zip ties. For tires and tubes, just try to find the biggest, knobbiest tire you can get. And for the tube, you want to get a tube because the stock tubes suck and they'll probably get a puncture in them as soon as you remove your original tires. So just be ready to get those. First month mods. Around the first few months is when you really figure out what kind of riding you'll mostly be doing, so you should mod accordingly. But I strongly believe that everyone, and I really do mean everyone that has a Suron, can greatly benefit from some Magura MT5 brakes. And like I said earlier, the stock brakes are really not the best brakes. And honestly, this one should probably be in the first day mods with how nice it makes your brakes feel. On top of that, I should mention that you can get larger rotors. I have a 220 rotor in the front and the rear, I don't feel like it makes that much of a difference, to be honest with you. Like, don't get me wrong, obviously there's more stopping power, but if you're having trouble stopping or having your brakes lock up well, it's probably not the issue of your rotors, it's probably the issue of your brakes themselves. The best way I can describe about how I feel about them is like, they don't really increase your stopping power all that much, but what they do help with a lot is heat dissipation, so your brakes don't overheat when you're doing a wheelie and you just loop out. And you'll really only need to consider this upgrade when you're running more power and you start running into overheating issues with your brakes. New wheels and tires. And now that you know what kind of riding you're going to be doing, this you know stock tires is going to be a game changer. And don't get me wrong, the 19 inch setup that the stock bike comes with is not bad at all. It's actually a very good setup if you're trying to do more trail riding, you're trying to be quick and agile. And they're also good wheels to learn how to wheelie on because they're so big, there's a lot of centrifugal motion going on. So that makes it a lot easier to stay balanced. But if you're trying to cater your riding to a different type of style, then changing your wheels up will make a big difference. I'm not going to go into this with great detail because there's a lot of videos out there discussing the best wheel setups in each situation. But personally, I have Luna Cycle 17 inch wheels with Michelin Pro Street tires for my Supermoto setup, the stock 19 inch wheels with the Shinko SR241 dual sport setup, and an 18 21 inch off road and mud enduro setup with the Maxxis tires. Bigger sprockets. If you're finding yourself climbing hills and you want more control and torque for those situations, a bigger sprocket on the stock bike is for you. If you think a bigger sprocket will help you wheelie, the bigger sprocket is not for you. The stock sprocket on the stock Suron is honestly the best for that. And that is mostly because you're not going to be able to hold your balance point over about 20 miles per hour with a bigger sprocket. Because the bigger your sprocket is, the more torque you'll have at the expense of your top speed. And also keep in mind that when you buy a bigger sprocket, you will need to buy a new chain because you're going to need a slightly longer chain to fit around that bigger sprocket. At this stage, I got a 54 tooth sprocket and it was just hardly fast enough to keep up with traffic on the side streets, but absolutely perfect for me off-road. Headlight and brake light upgrades. If you find yourself ever riding the Suron at night, you will pretty quickly realize how bad the stock headlight is. Now there's a lot of upgrades for this at different price ranges, so I guess pick whatever one you think looks coolest or the brightest. 
As I said earlier, all of my mods are linked down below. In addition, if you find yourself riding on the streets, especially at night, there is an LED kit for the rear taillights that get brighter when you squeeze the brake, you know, like an actual real brake light works. Anyway, this is a really good safety upgrade because the Suron is hard to see at night and with no built-in brake light, there is no way to signal the cars behind you that you are slowing down. Late Stage Upgrades Now these don't necessarily have to be the upgrades to do last, but they are without a doubt the most expensive, yet at the same time, they will completely transform your Suron into almost a different bike. Starting out first with suspension. If it wasn't so expensive, I would make this be a day one mod. Because aside from the stock pegs, there is nothing worse than the stock Suron suspension. Granted, I got dealt a bad hand by the Suron gods and got the worst possible option with the RST Killer Forks, aka the forks that will nearly kill you when you snap an axle, which happened to me. God damn! Woo! -hoo. Sheesh! God damn! Damn, boy! Okay, let's see if the bike's okay. Yeah. Yeah, that's not safe. That's not safe at all. But I have heard some good things about the newer suspension on the Surons, and I've actually ridden Surons with both DNM and KKE forks, and I've gotta say that none of them are amazing, but they are far better than RST, although that's not saying much. The issue comes down to the fact that the stock suspension is cheap mountain bike suspension, and they have no upgrade components for the extra weight of the Suron. Buying high performance downhill mountain bike forks like Bomber 58s, Fox 40s, or Dorados will make the ride way smoother, but still, they are not designed to deal with the extra weight of the Suron, and it is still a mountain bike suspension at the end of the day. And don't get me wrong, you can still send massive jumps with this suspension, but you basically need to run the maximum PSI that your forks are rated for if you don't want to be constantly bottoming out. On the other hand, if you're just looking to ride trails and do small jumps, the high-end mountain bike suspension is probably the best option for you. It's not going to bottom out, it's going to make your ride way more smooth. And if I were you, I would buy them used if you can, because it will save you a lot of money. And also your brand new Fox 40s are going to be the same as those used ones after a month of you riding your Suron. You will eventually have to do rebuilds on these, because once again, they are just not made for the Suron's weight. The only real solution to fix this entirely is either do a YZ fork swap, or get the new EXT forks, which is what I would personally get myself if I was to buy new forks for my bike again. And now for DNM and KKE, I know there are some options to send in your forks and have them pretty much rebuilt to handle the extra weight. And I have heard good things about this, but I do not have any experience with it personally, so take that as you will. And as a side note, the stock shock is not really all that bad. I'd actually say it's probably fine for 99% of strong riders out there, but regardless, I upgraded to the EXT rear shock, and yes, I do love it. It eats big drops like nothing, and it keeps my rear wheel pinned to the ground when riding over rough terrain. Is it worth $1,100? No, not really. But it is nice to have if I forget that I spent that much money on it. Controller upgrade. There are a growing number of different upgrade controllers out there for the Suron. Right away, the ones that I would avoid is any cheap Chinese controller or KO controllers, simply because you basically need to know how to tune it yourself with not really any help or an app that does it all for you. I personally have a BAC4000 tuned by Emoto Bros, and it has been absolutely amazing for me. I have had no issues with it, and when I needed help with some things when I was setting it up, they were very quick to respond to my questions. Another controller that I've seen and heard good things about is the Torp controller. Its main benefit is that unlike the BAC4000, you don't need to modify a stock battery to bypass it. And if you have a 72 volt battery, you can push it all the way to 25 kilowatts. Although I'm not really sure how accurate that claim is based on my own experience riding with my buddy Pirate EV, who has torque on his bike, and isn't really much faster than me pushing 13.5 kilowatts, especially in acceleration, but there could be a lot of factors in play here, or probably more importantly, a lot of diminishing returns, especially with the battery. Battery upgrade. The price of a battery upgrade paired with the controller is pretty much the exact price that you paid for your Suron. But at the same time, you are essentially buying a new bike. You'll have more than double the power and will easily reach 60 miles per hour. This is a Suron equivalent of going from a 250 to a 600. That is, if you go for power over range. There are some aftermarket batteries that don't require a control upgrade by having the same voltage but having more capacity. Some of these could more than double your range. And I've seen posts online of people getting close to a thousand miles in a single ride of a setup like this. By the time you're doing a battery upgrade, you should know what type of riding that you're striving for and you should consider which battery you should get. 
But regardless of what battery you choose, I would highly recommend buying it from Chai Batteries. There are other battery companies that I've heard very good things about, like eBMX, but Chai is one of the most reliable and I believe one of the fastest when it comes to actually getting the battery to you. So that's where I bought my battery from and that's what I recommend you would do. Not sponsored, although I wish I was. Chai, please reach out. Chain drive. Around now is when you're thinking, what should I upgrade with all this new power? Well, if you haven't upgraded your brakes already, you should do that first. But also, if you ride a lot off-road, I would recommend getting a chain drive conversion kit. The stock Surround has a main belt drive, which is good for keeping the sound down, but it can snap if you give it too much throttle when your rear wheel is in the air. But what most people won't tell you is that having a chain drive requires way more maintenance than a belt. And you will also need to replace your chain every few months as it will get stretched out or the links could even get binded together. I've had my chain drive for about a year and a half, and so far I've replaced three chains, two of which actually had the master link snap on me. So yes, you can still snap your chain even though you got the mod to prevent yourself from snapping your belt. So is it worth it? Yes, if you're doing a lot of rough riding, if you're just going on streets, you really don't need it. A motor upgrade. Some of you might be thinking that now that you have all this new power, you might burn out your motor. And while it definitely can happen if you aren't careful, realistically, as long as you're riding on a reasonable kilowatt level and you aren't pinning your bike full throttle for five minutes, you should be fine. There are a growing number of manufacturers coming out with upgraded motors, and at this point in time, it's too early to tell which ones are the best or are even worth it. So maybe this is something that I'll visit again in a future video. As for now, that is all I have. Thank you for watching, and check out my homie EV Pirate, as he helped me a lot with getting some of the clips in this video. Anyway, that's all I have for now. Thank you for watching, and see you guys in the next video.